Hey everybody, how you doing? My name is Ben Ibsen and I'm a 2D animator. Today I want to show you how to create some source code in After Effects just using a text layer with zero keyframes. So let's jump in and have a look. So this is what we're going to be creating inside of After Effects. So it's all the green text on the screen. All of that is created just using a single text layer with no keyframes. So let's jump into After Effects and find out how we actually do it. Cool, so we're here inside of After Effects and what we're gonna do firstly is just to create a text layer. So we're gonna go up to the text icon, click anywhere you want on the screen and just mash the keyboard because this will change anyway. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pre-comp this little text layer. So if you press Command, Shift and C, whilst it's selected, you can pre-comp it. So I'm just gonna do a letter. And if we double click into this pre-comp, here we have our letter. And this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna create just one composition that's gonna do random numbers for about 30 seconds, and then we'll offset all of that. So all we need to do is just create on one, uh, focus on one letter from this comp. So I'm just gonna make it a little bit bigger so we can see what we're doing. And then I'm gonna shrink this comp down. So if you right click and do comp settings, uh, I'm probably gonna make this uh, about 200 by 200, because it's gonna be quite small, nice and square. So, this is where all the magic happens. So I'm gonna drop down my menus and come to the source text option. You'll see there's a little stopwatch here. And what I want to do is press option and click on it. And that gives us the ability to write some code. And don't worry, this is gonna be really, really simple code. Um, so to begin with, what I'm gonna do right is random bracket one comma 10 and come away from it. So now what that's done, is if I just shrink this down so you can see what's happening in the minute. Um, what that's doing is every frame, every frame is changing numbers randomly. So it's obviously 7.9, 8.2, and so on and so forth. So every frame is giving me a different number. So that's, that's the first step in the right direction. But what we want to do, instead of having a decimal place, um, we want it to be solid numbers. So ideally we'd want it to be seven, seven, one, eight, eight, five, for example. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna slightly just adjust this code. And again, this is really dead simple code. Um, and basically at the beginning, what we want to do is just put in a little bit of math. So put capital M-A-T-H dot floor. And then we just need to put this random in brackets. So all that is doing is gonna run round down our numbers. So now if I go uh, command and arrows every frame, we get a whole number. So I can scale this back up now because it's not going off the edge. And then I'm just gonna center it into my composition. So now if I press play, every frame is a different number. Granted, that's very fast, so we will slow it down eventually. But the issue we've come into now is that source code is only one and zero, so we don't want any of these numbers. So this is where um, the first bit of code that I put in needs altering. So math floor is what rounds it down to a whole number. And then random, that's basically our scale. So that's, it's randomizing between one and 10. So for example, if I put one and 100 in, instead, we're gonna start getting a lot bigger numbers. And it's randomizing between one and 100. So to get between zero, we need to put 0 0.1, because if you put zero, it'll, it won't work. So you need to put 0 0.1 and 1.9. Sorry, 1.9. So now, what that's doing is it's random, give me a random number that's gonna be a whole number between zero and one, including zero and one. So if I press play, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one. So there we go, we have got our random source code. So I'm gonna make this composition a little bit longer. Uh, say I'm gonna make it 30 frames long, uh, 30 seconds long, sorry. Make our comp a bit bigger, drag it all the way out. So now for 30 seconds, that's just gonna keep changing between one and zero uh, every frame, but randomly. So what I want to do now is I'm gonna pre-comp this letter. I'm gonna put it into line. So now within this line, I'm gonna make this comp a little bit bigger. So let's make this 4,000 by 200. 
And then all I'm going to do now is duplicate this up loads of times. I'm going to put one at this end, one at the left, one at the right. It duplicates up loads of times. And if I select them all and align my layers, they'll all align nice and neat. I'm going to give them a little bit more space. I'll put that right to the end of the compositions. Select them all again and align them again. So again, very rarely do you get code where it's 111 all the way or 000 all the way. So that's why we've made it 30 seconds longer because this comp is actually going to be 10 seconds instead. In fact, we'll make this one 15 seconds. So now what I want to do is I've got 15 seconds extra on the end of each of these letters. So all I'm going to do now is just randomly drag all of these just to different amounts. Scroll so you can see them all. How many have I got? Golly, I've got a lot. I've got 40, 42 layers. So I might fast forward this bit. Cool, so now after doing all that, only just a little bit of dragging. Uh, if I press play, what we're gonna get is all of these numbers are gonna randomly generate again. So again, really fast, but don't worry, we'll slow all down in the end. So now we have a line, what we want to do is gonna pre-comp this line. So if I go back into my, my main comp at the end, on my line, shift command C, and then this can be, let's call it wall. So if I click into this now, I've got one line. So this is where I want to make it my actual comp size. So 1920 by 1080. And then I'm going to duplicate this up, put one at the top, click on that one, click on that one at the bottom. Just duplicate it, drag it into the middle. I'm probably going to not do it as many times this time. So maybe eight times, select them all and distribute them vertically. Oh yeah, so I can probably nudge this one up a little bit more, so it's at the top of the screen, that one at the bottom of the screen. I'm just grab them all and nudge them vertically again. There we go. So now, we've got them all looping again. But, we've got the same issue, they're all changing on the vertical line. So this time what we're going to do is each one, I can zoom in on this one because not as many layers, I can just offset it slightly. So it's still in line roughly with the number above it. Um, but just so it's not the same. Obviously we don't want to drag it all the way to the end. So we want to keep one number off the edge. So we'll do one one far side, do one the other far side, and then these can all go in the middle. So all I'm doing is just clicking and dragging. I'm holding, I'm holding shift down. So when you hold shift down, it'll snap on an axis. So it goes vertical, horizontal. Whereas if I don't, it could end up going a little bit off, but I want all the spacing to be equal. Uh, so I'll put that one there, I reckon. So now all these are all different layers. Again, really fast, don't worry, we'll slow that down. But all looking like it's just really random code. So if I go into my top composition, this is where we're gonna to start to add all of the little effects to slow everything down. So the first effect I'm gonna add is posterize time. I add this effect onto everything. Obviously different amounts, um, but I'll show you what this does. So posterize time will take, will force um, a frame rate onto onto the effect. So the minute is 24 frames, and that's what my uh, frame rate is, so you won't see any effect of it being on the composition at the minute. If I put this down to the extreme of one, that means it'll change frame every one second. So I press play, nothing's happening, change frame, change frame. So that's every second. So what I want to do is probably put around six. So that means that this will change frame, uh, change image every six frames. So to me, that's the, that's the number that I found worked well to make it feel like the code is being generated um, or typed out either or. Um, you can make it slower or faster, whichever fits you. Um, obviously, it still doesn't look too much like code at the minute. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the color just to make it feel a bit, bit matrix-like. So I'm gonna add fill effect on top of all of this. Um, obviously, red isn't very matrix. So I found a color that I'm a fan of. Not that color. That's the one. That's the color I'm a fan of. Um, so cool, it's looking all nice. It's, it's looking a bit too crisp though, like a lot of source code, backend web programming. Don't, don't get me wrong, I'm not a web programmer, um, but it all feels quite um, pixely. It all feels, you wanna feel a bit old school 
Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to add, try and make it all look all pixely. So I'm going to add uh, an effect called mosaic in this one to drag that on. And what that does, obviously, it looks very blocky at the minute because it's creating um, a block for every, ten, basically 10 blocks across and 10 blocks down. So all I need to do is just up the size of these just to make it feel like it's a bit more. So again, I found about 300 and 300, uh, and 300 worked all right for me. So there you go. It looks a little bit um, like you're watching it in low res, but th that's the feel that I, I personally wanted to try and find. Um, and then across all of this, the last thing that I wanted to add onto it was um, just a little glow, just to make it feel like the numbers are in a, in a bit of a screen. So I'll play around the glow settings, just minimize all my other effects. So there we go, great glowing. What I think I'm gonna do is slightly, I'm gonna go back into, so you can change your font at any time, and it's um, it's not, I've not done this in a destructive way. Um, so I can basically drop into my bottom text line, which is this bottom one, um, and I can just change my fonts. Uh, but what I'm gonna, probably just gonna do, I'm just gonna make it a bit thinner. Um, so all I've done is change the weight of it, and then go back into my top one. There you go, it just feels like it's, there's, there's a bit more black space, so it's, it's a bit less harsh on your eyes. Um, and then what I did in my example, is I put it inside of a TV screen, an old like retro computer TV screen, um, and I bent the edges slightly. And to do that, to say this is in my screen, um, all I did was just put a little bulge on top of everything. Uh, bulge. Now I'm just gonna have this as an adjustment layer, um, just so it's separate to my other effects. Um, so then all I'm gonna do is just make the bulge a bit bigger, horizontally, a bit bigger vertically, so you can see, it's if I put it off the screen, so you don't see the edges of, my, of the effect. So obviously that looks a little bit too much, so I'm probably gonna bring the height down a little bit. But you can see how now, if that was to sit in a computer screen, it'd feel like the, the screen's slightly curved. And then if I just press play, now, looks like source code is being generated, obviously, Feel free to change the frame rate. Um, you can animate this like vertically. So say if you want to make this massive, uh, I can just duplicate this quickly. Uh, do a little bit, get After Effects to do the work for me. Parent that. And then say for example, I just want to make this wall move over five frames. Minus 540. So now that in theory should loop. So now, it looks like the screen, I probably just need to bring that up a little bit more. So I have a consistent gap. Cool, there you go, you got a little bit of a source code wall happening for you. Thanks guys, I really enjoyed doing this tutorial. I'm gonna be doing some more in the next coming weeks and months, so if you wanna be notified when they go live, hit the subscribe button below, uh, and I will see you then.